the third type of difficulties that are occurred in the instruction pipeline is branch difficulties when we are occurring the branch difficulties how to avoid that branch difficulties that we are discussed in this video one of the major problem that can be occurred in the instruction pipeline is the occurrence of branch instruction we already know that a branch instruction is of two types first one is unconditional branch second one is conditional branch in unconditional branch without any condition we are transferring the program control from the currently running instruction to the target instruction okay it alters the sequential program flow by loading with the target address in the program counter whereas in the case of conditional branch instruction if the condition is satisfied the program control selects the target instruction if the condition is not satisfied the program control continues with the next instruction in the sequence okay so suppose i am taking one branch instruction that is there in the address 100 instruction name is br br is nothing but branch instruction it can take only one address field okay so this is 101 instruction this is 102 instruction and here this is 500 instruction okay now we are executing this branch instruction so pc initially contains the address 100 because we are executing this branch instruction that is there at the address 100 okay when we are executing this instruction the program counter always points to the address of the next instruction to be executed so we are executing 100 while executing this instruction the program control can contain the address of the next instruction 101 but here this instruction is a branch instruction so whenever the branch instruction is executed the program control can be transferred from the currently running instruction address 100 to the target instruction address that is 500 so the program control immediately transfer the control from 100 instruction to 500 instruction so that after executing 100 instruction the program control immediately goes to 500 so instead of 101 the program counter is loaded with the new address that is 500 so this type of <coughs> branch instruction can be called as unconditional branch without any condition the program control can be transferred from the currently running instruction that is located at address 100 to the 500 address so this is called as unconditional branch an unconditional branch instruction always uh, alters the program flow by loading the program counter with the target address 500 next suppose this is a conditional branch instruction if the condition is satisfied at the branch instruction the program control can be transferred from 100 100 to 500 if the condition is satisfied suppose if the condition is not satisfied at the branch instruction the program control continues with the next instruction address that is 102 
If the condition is satisfied, the program control can be transferred from 100 instruction to 500 instruction. Okay. If the condition is not satisfied, the program control continues with the next instruction address. So these are the two types of branch instruction. First one is unconditional branch instruction. Second one is conditional branch instruction. So, so pipeline computers employ various hardware techniques to minimize the performance degradation caused by instruction branching. There are five hardware techniques are there. First one is free fetch target instruction. Second one is branch target buffer. Third one is loop buffer. And fourth one is branch prediction. And fifth one is delay load. By using these five hardware techniques, we have to minimize the performance of the instruction pipeline that are caused by the branch instructions. Now we can go for one by one technique. First, we can go for free fetch target instruction. First mechanism is free fetch target instruction. This is one of the mechanism which is used to handle branch instructions. First, I am explaining this example. So, BR is a branch instruction that is available at address 100. Branch instruction have only one address field that has 500. Whenever we are executing this branch instruction, the program control can immediately transfer from 100 instruction to 500 instruction. Now we have to execute 500, 501 and 502 instructions. After that, the program control can immediately transfer to 101 instruction. Then 102 instructions are executed. In this way, the branch instruction is executed. Now, in the free fetch target instruction mechanism, we have to free fetch the target branch instructions 500, 501 and 502 even before the execution of the instructions followed by the branch instructions that is 101 and 102. Okay, simply we can say that before the execution of 101 and 102, we have to free fetch the target branch instructions 500, 501 and 502. Okay, so these three instructions we have to free fetch before the execution of 101 and 102 instructions because BR is a branch instruction. So, this is called as free fetch target branch instruction. Next, second mechanism is branch target buffer. Simply, it can be denoted by BTB. It is another mechanism which is used to handle branch instruction. So, BTB is a small memory unit which is included in the fetch segment of the pipeline. So, BTB consists of mainly two fields. The first field contains the previously executed branch instructions. The second field contains the target branch instructions. And it can also store the instructions that are followed by the branch instructions. Okay, so the first field contains the previously executed branch instructions. Second field contains the target branch instructions. Target branch instructions means 500, 501, 502. And it also stores the instructions that are followed by the 
branch instruction that is nothing but 101 and 102 so these are the fields that are contained in the BPP when we are decoding the branch instruction first it checks the BPP for the address of the instruction if it is available in the BTB the instruction is already available directly and free fetch continues from the new path okay if the branch instruction is available in the BTB okay we have to prefetch the branch target instructions by using new path if it is not available in the BTB so the program control continues with a new instruction stream and uh, stores the target branch instructions in the BTB because it is not available if it is not available okay the program control can goes to a new instruction stream and uh, target branch instructions are stored in the BTP because they are not available the instruction is not available if it is available we have to prefetch the target branch instructions by using new path okay next we can go for third mechanism loop buffer the third mechanism which is used to handle branch instructions is the loop buffer first of all what is loop buffer a loop buffer is a small very high speed memory that is maintained by the instruction fetch segment of the pipeline whenever a program loop is detected in the program it is stored in the loop buffer entirely including all the branches the program loop now can be executed without having to access the memory next fourth one is branch prediction branch prediction is another mechanism to handle branch instructions a pipeline with branch prediction uses some additional logic by using that logic we have to guess the outcome of a branch instruction before it is executed the pipeline then prefetches the prefetches the target instructions by using some predicted path next fifth one is delayed branch so most of the risk processors uses this uh, mechanism to handle branch instructions so risk processor stands for reduced instruction set computer okay most of the risk processors uses uh, delayed branch mechanism to handle branch instructions so in this mechanism whenever a branch instruction is detected by the compiler then we have to rearrange the program instruction code by using by inserting some useful instructions and keeps the operate and keeps the instruction pipeline operating without any in interruptions okay here whenever a branch instruction is encountered the compiler detects that branch instruction after that rearranges the instructions of a program by inserting useful instructions and keeping the instruction pipeline operation without any interruptions the example for delayed branch is insertion of no operation instructions in the program whenever no operation instruction is inserted in the program after the 
branch instruction during the execution of no operation instruction the pipeline free fetching the target branch instructions and continues the program flow without interruptions okay so delayed branch in the delayed branch technique whenever a branch instruction is detected by the compiler then we have to rearrange the instructions of the program by inserting useful instructions and keeps the instruction pipeline operating without any interruptions here uh, the example for delayed branch is insertion of no operation instruction after the branch instruction what is the necessity of inserting no operation instruction after the branch instruction while executing the no operation instruction the compiler or the computer free fetches the target branch instruction and uh, uh, continues the program flow without any interruptions so in this way we have to handle branch difficulties or our branch instructions in the instruction pipeline so first one is prefetch target instruction second one is branch target buffer third one is loop buffer fourth one is branch prediction and fifth one is delayed branch by using this five mechanisms we have to handle the branch instructions in the instruction pipeline i hope all of you understanding this video if you really understanding this video please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates uh, before uh, this video one video is how to handle uh, pipeline conflicts such as uh, resource conflicts and uh, data dependency conflict that video link is available in the comment box that video you have to watch so if you really like this video please subscribe my youtube channel divela srinivasara after subscribing my youtube channel click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my youtube channel after subscribing my youtube channel and watch the playlist called computer organization or our computer architecture for better understanding of this entire course thank you thank you one and all for watching this video